The last time you guys saw our M5, it was making a heck load of power on a dyno. And while I was chasing Ben Collins in his 911 Turbo, I think he was quietly impressed. So much so that he's texted me asking if he can have a shot at it. So he's asked me to meet him in this weird, secluded woodland car park. Slightly odd. He should be here any minute. Hey, boy. Where's your dog? What dog? Oh, OK. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. E61M5, what do yeah. you Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for letting me have a go in it. Absolutely. We've picked a good day for it. I thought I'll give you a quick walk around and then just send you out. Magic. Cool. So, V10 Estate. Yep. I'll tell you the good and bad. Let's start at the back with the bad. Tell me the whole story. So, the one bad thing about this car is it did have a very small fire back in the day. Right. Literally just in this corner, there was a recall on the battery cabling, shorted on the body, and there was a few licks of flames around here. So they knew there was a problem, but it didn't quite get back in time to get fixed. Didn't quite fix it. Well, fixed it, got it wrong. Yeah. Small fire, so the car was written off, but all been fixed, all good. Why was it written off if it's such a small contained spot? Well, the audience knows this, but basically all of this is very expensive, the right. carpet, and it's especially the Alcantara roof lining, yeah. financially wrote off the car. All been fixed, so we got it for quite a cheap price because yeah. it's technically a category N, but it's absolutely solid, and let me show you the engine. Awesome. Bay. I see you've moved on from Risk and yes, Hornby. Yes, that was part That's of the good. NG deal. Yeah. So we got this car very cheap, but we seem to have found a minter of an S85. Now yep. you will have driven this back in the day. Five liter V10, supposed to be 507 horsepower. We've had it on the dyno. From stock, it was putting out 510. Yep. And then we put these carbon intakes from Eventuri. They've taken it to 518. And actually out in the open, probably more like 520-ish. So, so breathing better, she pistons is, are more relaxed, more exactly. punch. She yeah. is packing. I expected this to be 480, 490, you yeah. know, about a horsepower a year loss. Absolutely not. That's amazing. For a V10, a performance engine to survive so well. Exactly. People freak out about these engines, but fingers crossed, touch wood, we found a very good one. It looks great. So minor tinkering. But other than this, with the intakes, there's not much else you've done? There is plans to... Uh, Eventuri are going to make a full carbon fibre plenum. Yep. So imagine all of this in the same finish as that. It's going to it look deserves amazing. it. I think it's great. Um, and I think once you're out in the road, the sound of these is right. just amazing. Apart from that, it's pretty standard. It's as it was. Automatic, paddle shift. Automated manual. So I'm interested to hear what you think about that yeah. because it was maybe cool back in 2007, but I'd love to hear what you think about that now, 15 years on, whether it can still hack it. Two modes, 400 horsepower, 500 horsepower. Go for it. Fantastic. Keys, please. Okay, as I say, we've got a minter, so please don't break it. I won't. And while trusting. you're away, I know you're after a hot hatch, so I'm going to get online and see if I can find you something. You the man. All right, see you later. Cool. Be careful, but enjoy it. <laughs> right. It's always interesting stepping into another man's car and seeing what you find there. The peanuts in the door sleeve. The vanilla air freshener clearly covering up for some flatulence issues. We don't need that. Let's take that one off. Back to the important stuff, though. This is a rare beast, an M5 Estates from 2007, which was a watershed year for BMW. I remember taking out the BMW M3 in a contest at Ascari Resort for Top Gear versus Clarkson, his AMG C63. They were diametrically opposed. The M3 totally refined handling, superb poise and balance and wonderful drivable power from that V8. And it was like nothing that had gone before it. It really was a total sea change from the M3s of the past. It was less bony, but still had that support. You could really hurl it around the track and it had a fantastic level of grip. This M5 just takes that on a little bit further with two more cylinders on essentially the same engine to make it up to 500 brake horsepower, super linear power. The question you have to ask, though, is that after 15 years, does it still have it? Now, power-wise, we know on the dyno, yeah, it's all there. Handling-wise, this car always felt a little bit large, quite long, and a little bit roomy when it comes to how much road it takes up. 
but actually I feel the support and the suspension. I don't feel anything that feels tired, feeling the bumps are being taken care of appropriately without too much roll. So far, so good. Okay, this is looking nice. 1988 Peugeot 205 GTI, the 1.9. My dad had one of these, black with the red piping. That's lovely, let's keep that as a tab. is fantastic. What I like about this auto gearbox is that in urban environments for cruising around, it's fairly laid back. And it's only when you press the M button, you get a much more ferocious response. You get the full whack of power from the engine mapping, taking you up from 400 to 500 horsepower. And you also get these little inflatable side supports that help pinch you in the kidneys to keep you in your seat through hard cornering. And the response underfoot, the tenor is really changed. You really feel the advance of the power and the response in the throttle is much higher. So Ben appears to be enjoying the M5 so far and we appear to have gotten very lucky with finding a good one. And today's sponsor, Car Vertical, is the perfect tool to make sure you don't buy a dud either. Car Vertical uses databases from all over the world to collate data on a car. If it's been stolen, has any outstanding finance, if it's failed an MOT or has been crashed in the past, a report from Car Vertical will tell you. For example, here's a report for a later generation M5 saloon that we could have gone for. It may have looked okay in the advert, but once you plug the registration into Car Vertical, the report tells us that there's no mileage issues. It has never been stolen, but it does flag up that this M5 has been damaged at some point. Flick down to the damage section and you can immediately see it had a shunt in December 2020. And the best thing is that it even shows pictures of the crash damage when it went up for auction. That front end has taken a hammering. And just imagine you'd bought this M5 repaired without knowing that it had had a shunt of this magnitude. If you are looking to buy a second-hand car anytime soon, use our exclusive link in the description of this video to get a 10% discount when using Car Vertical to make extra sure you aren't buying a car with a dodgy history. By clicking the link below, you will also help support us making videos like this one. I wonder if Ben is still enjoying the Beamer. It's so cool. You just get that fantastic little squirm that's so unique to the M series BMWs. Just love this car. But actually though, these side supports are quite annoying. I feel like I'm being felt up inappropriately, but gadgets wise, the rest of this car really works. The heads up display is exactly where you want it. So you never take your eyes off the road, showing me gear, RPM and speed. And the driving experience in this thing is really vivid. Really good response. I've heard online that some people find the braking a little bit milky in these cars. I don't sense that at all. It's got massive steel brakes that are really ripping the speed off. And really good agility and feedback in the steering wheel. Got really good sensation coming through the divining rod. Can feel the grip. Really in tune. And with the M on, limited traction control, so I can feel what's happening in the tail. OK, now definitely going up in price here, we've got very, very nice Renault Clio V6. What colour is this? Liquid yellow. One of four, apparently. Handle like shit, but I'm sure Ben would be able to handle it. I love this thing. It's cheeky. This car really just takes me back. It just feels fantastic. It's so drivable, easy to drive, feel really planted. It's just like slipping your hand into a leather glove. You know exactly where you are all the time. I think BMW were really keen to capitalize on the links they had with Formula One back in the day. The BMW Williams F1 team with a V10 engine powering that monster. And I'm a huge fan of the V10. Raced for two seasons at Le Mans in an LMP1 car powered by a V10 Judd engine. You just get really accustomed to loving that high revving sound. This thing revs out to 8,200 RPM. It makes fantastic tones. So many tones. It's surgically precise. You can really feel that power all the way through the rev range. Much more pliable than a V8, not as cumbersome as a V12, just right. Now, this is an interesting one. Lancia Delta, but it's that weird modern one. 
Is this based on a Punto or something? It's got the right wheels, but if you're going to tell people you've got a Lancia Delta, you don't want to turn up in that, right? Come on, let's find a real one. Whoever spec this car originally went to town. I mean, this sunroof has a sunroof and a half. All the details in here, the Alcantara leather, all of it telling you what this car is really all about is the ultimate touring car. It's a car you can sustain high speeds of above 200 miles an hour on those big open German roads. Take the entire family with you, the dog, the picnic, everything. You can literally have your cake and eat it because you've got a performance car that is practical, an everyday workhorse and a fantastic piece of kit. It has got the mix of mellow and fast down to a T. Just take it for a tour around these country roads. You could slam it around a track if you wanted to. I feel a bit guilty doing that with a car of this age. What's amazing, though, is that this was the last touring edition of an M-Class vehicle that BMW made, 2007. That's about to change because BMW are launching the M3 Touring Edition this year, 75th anniversary of M for BMW. Now, it better be good because the expectations are very high. Done well here, Mike. It's perfect. Okay, this is better. A 1990 Lancia Delta HF. Now, I bet he probably wants an Evo 2. This is one of the earlier ones, which I think has less horsepower and it's not got that nice bulge in the bonnet. Hmm. Good fun? Yeah, awesome. Loved it. Good. Well, give me a, a quick report on the car. Best bit? Uh, do you know what? It, it just hasn't diminished at all since I last drove it 15 years ago. Good. Um, I just think that they've still, the, the essence of what made these so special in that era and from then on, it's just so balanced and intuitive and easy to drive. And uh, I didn't go mad or anything, it's your car, but you know, you can really dig into the brake. And when you accelerate, it just, the, the chassis just balances exactly the way you would want it to with a rear wheel drive front engine car. Um, that is what you want. You want to be able to feel the sporting DNA, and I think it's it's still got it. Cool. Worst bit? There isn't anything wrong with it. I mean, the only thing I notice is uh, perhaps at the rear, there's a bit too much movement. I think um, it's air suspension, air suspension maybe back, has lost yeah. something. Okay. That's an easy fix. Sure. Um, but I wouldn't change a thing, yeah. Good. Well, my main question, I'm 50-50 on it. Should we manual swap it? Because you can put the M3, the E92's manual gearbox in this thing. What do you think? Okay, so I did notice that that little thing that is the automatic lever. Little knob, yeah. It stands out for the wrong reasons and it, it's quite ugly. And actually even the little surround that it's in, it looks, it doesn't quite match the rest of the interior, which is really sort yeah. of plush. Um, but honestly, like once you, you know, stick it in D, you're really off on the paddle shift the whole time. And you've got the fantastic option between, you know, the, the easy going, or the aggressive with the yeah, M, yeah, full yeah. power, full aggression on the, on the gear chain. So I don't think it's necessary. Okay, well, I'm gonna ask you guys this one as well. Should we manual swap this E61? I know there's one other person that's done it. It would be a manual V10 estate car. That would be a fantastic piece of kit on top of already what it is. But I don't know, will it ruin the car? Or will it make it even better? Please guys, comment down below because I am genuinely 50-50. I have found some decent hot hatches for you. I'll send these once I'm home. Thank you. Thank you for today. Yeah, no, pleasure. Really enjoyed it. Safe trip home. And you?